Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 8 and compare it against the iPhone 7 in 2024 and see how both these particular devices hold up. Now, the big thing I will definitely tell you when it comes down to either one of these particular iPhones is that I probably would not recommend any single person to go ahead and buy these particular phones anymore. I think they are severely outdated and it makes so much more sense to go ahead and buy a device that is still supported with software. You can think of an iPhone like the iPhone XR or newer. Those iPhones are still supported with software. These ones are no longer supported. So keep that in mind. That's kind of how you feel about them. If you do want to pick up some iPhones that I would recommend buying this year though, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can also support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both these particular iPhones, the very first thing to kind of keep in mind here is that within both these particular devices, I'm a fan of the way these phones look like back in 2016, 2017 when they came out. I'm really not the biggest fan of them right now. So with the iPhone 7, this phone came out in 2016, and this was a very interesting device because this was actually one of the last iPhones to basically bring the, you know, the lack of a headphone jack. So this one was the first iPhone to remove the headphone jack at the end of the day, which is a pretty crazy thing. You were basically getting, you know, a you know 4.7 inch panel on the front, which is, you know, pretty okay. I still remember buying this phone, going to the Apple store, buying it back then. And it was an interesting experience because you didn't even know what Apple was going to do next. And the iPhone 10 was a massive upgrade, but this one was still a good upgrade for the most part. You're getting your, you know, earpiece speaker, front facing speaker here for the first time at the very top, which was very interesting. You're getting touch ID too. And overall, it was a very, you know, good. It was kind of what we saw before for the last couple of years. With the iPhone 8, this was a more interesting device because there were a couple more changes. And this was, I would say, a bigger difference from the iPhone 7 than the iPhone 7 was to the iPhone success. So with the iPhone 8, still basically the same size display and everything. You were getting true tone though which basically like warmed the display out a little bit. And that was something that was actually very nice. I love being able to have a phone like that, that would look like that, that would perform like that. And I think this in and of itself was another very cool thing going on for this particular device. And I for one was a, I was a big fan of the way this particular phone looked like from that particular side as well. Now on the bottom, both of them were giving you lightning ports, which again was very nice. No headphone jacks in either one of these. On the back sides, this was another very interesting you know, thing. So both were giving you single camera setups on the back, but the iPhone 8 was giving you this glass back where the iPhone 7 was giving you that standard aluminum back. So this was kind of a difference, you know, here for the most part, because if you're going to go through and pick up a phone, well, the iPhone 8 was from a body standpoint, a significant difference coming from the previous device rather than something like, you know, the iPhone 7. With the iPhone 8, not only were you getting that glass back, but you were also getting wireless charging as well. So that was another very big difference here. Like imagine going through getting a phone and literally the next year the phone is like significantly better. That is kind of what was going on here. And you know, we want that every single year with our devices, but definitely without a doubt in this particular situation, the iPhone 8 from the exterior is such a better phone than the iPhone 7. Another thing to kind of keep in mind here too, for the most part between both, is the fact that, you know, both of them are very, very outdated when it comes down to these two devices. You know, if you're looking at a phone like this and you're looking at other phones in the market today, both these phones look significantly outdated. They are cheap phones. You can buy them, you know, for, for you know, pennies on the dollar compared to the phones nowadays, but they are just not that, you know, they're, it's like buying the first iPhone. It's like, why would you want to do that? Although these ones have more power and everything than the first iPhone, it just doesn't make too much sense to go and buy these types of devices because they're already outdated by the time you buy them. So from that side, that kind of covers it up there for the most part. Now, on top of that, when it comes down to the camera side, both these phones are giving you single camera setups on the back side, which I think is, you know, great. I don't really have that much to complain about there for the most part. I mean, I wish they had more cameras, but you know, what are you going to do? I think with phones like this, they're basically giving you a okay experience for what you'd expect from a single camera setup. Now you can do 4K at 60 on the back of both these, 1080p on the front, and like, you know, there's really not too much else you can kind of do here. I think if you're going to go through and buy a phone, I think a majority of people would rather get a phone that's still going to have, you know, a, maybe a dual camera setup at the very least. With these types of cameras, not only are you missing out on the, you know, other cameras, you're also missing out on 4K at 60 on the front, and the camera quality just isn't that great, you know? And as I mentioned before, I would just hate for you to go and buy a phone like this and have it already, you know, not giving you a great camera experience 
And especially if you're going to start making videos on YouTube, or if you want to do a TikTok, you know, video or whatever, you're really not going to be getting that great of experience here either. So it just kind of becomes like a worse and worse experience the more and more you kind of use these phones. And the older and older, the more and more you use this phone, the older and older it's going to get, and the worse and worse it's going to perform against the newer competition. So from that side too, this is just one of those devices that you know I just really wouldn't recommend people to buy because it's really not going to be giving you that great of an experience. So that right there in and of itself, in my personal opinion, is another very, very big thing to keep in mind here too. Again, it's not like the biggest deal in the world or anything, but if you are planning on getting a phone, you know, I would recommend kind of avoiding this, these particular ones because it's not really going to be giving you that great of an experience. So from that side, that kind of covers it up there as well. Now, on top of that, some other big things to keep in mind is with the software. The software of both these phones are kind of basically outdated already when it kind of comes down to it. So, you know, with iOS 17, you know, or iOS, so on iOS 16 on that iPhone, you know, the iPhone 8, it's good and everything and it's great, but it really isn't going to be giving you that great of experience. I could basically say the same thing with iOS 15 on the iPhone 7. Like both of these phones are going to be giving you very, very average types of experiences. And like I said, I just don't, I just don't think I would recommend buying these types of phones because they're already so outdated. You know, what is the point of going through buying a phone if it's already going to be giving you like a very like wishy-washy type of experience? And I would probably say that is almost exactly the same thing that's going on here. So once again, keep that in mind. There are significantly better phones out there that are going to, you know, that are going to give you significantly better experiences. These ones, you know, they're just not really going to be giving you that in my personal opinion. So from that side, and that kind of covers it up there as well. From the performance side, both these are very interesting too. So with the iPhone 7, you're basically going to be getting that, you know, Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM. With the iPhone 8, it's going to be giving you that Apple A11 bonding chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM as well. And this is another one of those situations where it's like, you know, both these phones are fairly old. So there's not like, you know, clearly the iPhone 8 is probably going to be the faster one. But even at that point, it doesn't really matter that much because like both these phones are like already so old. I don't really think anybody really is going to be planning on using either one of these phones when it comes down to it that much. But the big thing I could probably say is that, you know, when it comes down to both these phones, I think there is a lot of capability still between them. And I think that's actually kind of a nice thing for the most part. Like if you're going to go through and pick up a device, you know, you could still use these phones on an everyday basis and still kind of have some experience. I think that is, you know, a good thing and a good quality for these types of phones. The only thing though, is that if you're going to go through and like pick up a device, neither one of these are going to be the first ones I'd recommend, like I said, but you know, there's worse phones out there that you can go and buy. But like I said, I'd probably recommend purchasing some other devices before you buy these ones. So overall, what I can definitely tell you is I think both these phones are very interesting. And I think they did a lot to Apple on their whole entire ecosystem and everything. But I would probably say, like, I would not recommend anyone to go ahead and purchase these devices anymore. I think there's significantly better phones for you to go and pick up rather than these ones. And I think that's probably the most important thing to keep in mind here. So from that side, that kind of covers it up here for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.